What's up Average Dad fans, welcome back to another video and these are my first impressions of the Huawei MatePad 13.2. Let's go! So it's been a while since I had a tablet in the studio and what a tablet to get. For those that don't know, I have been using the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. No, I did not upgrade to the S9. Unlike the phones Average Dad uses, which are two every month, I tend to stick with my tablets. And when I like a tablet, I'm loyal to it. It started off years ago with the iPad Pro, and then the Tab S8 Ultra came out, and I was blown away. That 14.6 inch screen, I had to have it. So, for the past year and a bit, I've been using that. Now, this came into the studio and I've been using it for a, just a few hours now. It's only my first impressions. And already I can tell you that the display on this beast is better than the Samsung. And the speakers are just mind-blowing. So, 100% what I'm going to do is... I'm going to make a comparison video between the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the Tab S8 Ultra and the Huawei MatePad 13.2. But these are my first impressions of the Huawei. So first things first, we have to talk about it. It's a display. A 144 hertz Truex display from Huawei. What the true X means is a thousand nits of peak brightness, brighter than any other tablet you can buy. As mentioned, 144 hertz, the full P3 color gamut, and 10 bit color, all within this flexible OLED display. Now, that flexible part is quite important because when you touch the display, you can actually feel. A little bit of flex and why that's important is because you can buy the new Huawei M3 pen. The pen and the tablet together give you the lowest latency in any tablet. Yes, Huawei as always are giving you the best of hardware bar none. Now for me personally, I use my tablet mostly at night before I fall asleep to watch a TV show. If you're bothered right now, I'm watching Reacher. Fantastic check out on Amazon Prime. Other than that, my tablet's maybe used for a bit of multimedia, a bit of surfing YouTube, the web, listening to a podcast. Nothing too taxing. Now, the only thing I can compare the speakers on the Huawei to that I own is actually my MacBook Pro. Not my iPad Pro, the MacBook Pro. For anyone that knows, Apple do fantastic speakers and the MacBook Pro, I have the 16 inch version, has unbelievable sound. The Huawei MatePad 13.2, somehow in this 5.5 millimeter thick device, yes, only 5.5 millimeters, I, I don't know what tomfoolery or trickery they're doing, but the, the speakers sound fantastic. And no, not just because they go loud. The depth, the bass, the separation, the mids, the highs, the lows, everything just sounds really good. It actually sounds a bit spatial as well. Now, I've not looked through the settings in depth to see if there's a spatial audio setting, but it really does fill the room up really, really well. Now, if you are a productivity demon, like other Huawei tablets, there are ample accessories for you. As mentioned, the pen. You can also pick up the folio case with the keyboard case. So you can have just the screen protector bit at the back, or you can snap on the keyboard and work away to your heart's content. Now, where things do get slightly dicey, is 
finding out what's inside. What's powering this? I had assumed it would be the Kirin 9000 chip, just like you get on the Mate X5. I know it's Harmony OS 4.0, so that's the operating system. But even on the Huawei website, I couldn't tell you what chipset it's covering it. I couldn't find it on GSM Arena. All I know is in a short period of time using it, it's been perfect for what I use it for. Now, I haven't video edited. I haven't rendered 3D graphics, so I'm not going to say it's a powerhouse yet, but for productivity and consuming content, it's been A-OK. -okay. And I think that just leads into one of the issues with the Huawei tablet. As always, hardware is fantastic, and we'll talk about even the cameras soon, but software-wise, it's G-Box, I'm afraid. I bought the Chinese model, however, there is a global model if not released now, it will be released soon. I'll leave a link to the Huawei global site in the description. Even with the global ROM though, as you know, you can't get Google mobile services. There's no Play Store access. You have to go through Gbox, which is a virtual Google Play Store. Now, to be honest, this is actually not a problem on a tablet. Because typically, you're not out and about with your tablet, you're... It's in the house most of the time. YouTube works fine through Gbox, Instagram, WhatsApp. You can link your WhatsApp device to this. So I'm not saying it's a major issue unless you're one of those people that work from your tablet and expect 5G and notifications to come through on time. Yeah, that's not going to happen with this tablet. You should maybe consider the Samsung or the iPad. Now, as far as cameras... It's a dual lens in the back. There's an 8 megapixel wide and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. So no, not the best hardware for cameras you've ever seen, even on a tablet, to be honest. But, like Huawei do, the photos taken from this tablet are outstanding. Don't get me wrong, zoom is horrific. Anything past 5x, this is a 5x shot, and it's even that is pushing the boundaries. But for ultra-wide and wide, colours look good and sharp and punchy. Clarity is obviously there. And the rear cameras are actually shoot video at 4K, which is, again, if you're one of those people that shoots video at 4K on your tablet, have at it. What I use my tablet for sometimes, and what you might use your tablet for, is video calls. Now, it's a 1080p camera on the front. Here's a little sample. So this is a front-facing video on the Huawei MatePad 13.2. The Huawei iPad Pro. What do we think? Looks good to me on the monitor. Interested to know how it sounds, but I can tell you for video conference calls, this is going to be better than most webcams you can get. So I know cameras aren't high up on your list, but battery probably should be. If it isn't, it definitely should be. For your tablet, there is nothing more frustrating than watching just a few YouTube videos, a few movies, just a few hours of content, and your tablet comes up a low battery warning. Well, with the 10,100 milliamp hour battery and the mystery chip inside, battery life should be pretty damn good. And if it's not the longest battery life you'll get in a tablet, it's certainly going to be the fastest charging tablet you'll ever see. 8 to 8 watts charging with the charger included in the box. So you can get this tablet from dead to 75% in just 40 minutes. Now I mentioned the thickness. I want to talk about weight. This is the lightest large format pro tablet on the market at just over 500 grams it's a shade lighter than the tab s8 ultra and it's a shade lighter than the ipad pro and quite a bit lighter than the tab s8 ultra um, a really nice form factor and in case you're wondering this is a glass back it's just a nano fiber glass with some sandblasting being done ultimately what it means is nicely protected but with no fingerprints. One thing you will get on some black or other tablets is fingerprints all over it. 
So yeah, the rear doesn't. I mean, don't get me wrong, the front is a tablet. It's going to get fingerprints, but no, it's sharp. And if I haven't mentioned it already, the star of the show has to be the display and the speakers. So for me, this 13.2 inch tablet size is probably the perfect size. Believe it or not, the 12.9 inch iPad is a bit too small, in my opinion. The 14.6 SA Ultra is maybe too big for some people. This might be the sweet spot. And the usual caveat with all Huawei devices is you just have to be aware of the software issues. With no Google Play services, the tablet will work absolutely fine for 99.9% .9 of things you want to do with a tablet. But if you rely on Google, this isn't the one for you. And then also another mystery right now is the price. I was sent this by a very loyal friend and subscriber. He actually sent me the pen, everything. He loves Huawei, and rightly so. But I can only tell you the Chinese price. I have no idea what the global release price will be. Only that it will be cheaper than the iPad Pro and the Samsung Tab S9 Ultra by at least £200. And that might even include every accessory you've seen in this video. So, value for money-wise, the Mate XS2, the Mate XS2, the Mate Pad 13.2 could be the one for you. Now, before I close out this video, if you're still here, another faithful friend and subscriber is actually selling their Mate XS2. That's why I said that earlier. It was in my head. If you are interested, please DM me on Instagram. He's selling it for 600 bucks. That's it. So if you're in the UK, that's less than £500 for a Huawei Mate XS2, half a terabyte of storage. DM me on Instagram. I'll send you pictures and yeah, let's do a deal. I will be doing an in-depth review of the tablet. I will be doing a full comparison between the three tablets I'd mentioned. So if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. And until next time.